may be seated. And I believe today that as I knew Ruth, that was her story. Praising her Savior. Not just on Sunday morning, but praising her Savior all the day long. We're going to call now for the reading of the Holy Scripture. We're going to ask Reverend DeVise Toon, the National Field Director for the National Action Network, to come with the Old Testament. And presiding elder Kevin D. Coakley, the pastor of Durham Memorial Amy Zion Church, to come with the New Testament. Our Old Testament scripture this morning will be found in Psalms 90. Lord, you have been our dwelling place throughout all generations. Before the mountains were born, or you brought forth the whole world, from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. You turn people back to dust, saying, Return to dust, you are mortal. A thousand years in your, in your sight is like the day that has just gone by, or like the watch in the night. Yet you sweep people away in the sleep of death. They are like new grass of the morning. In the morning spring up new. But in the evening, is dried up and withered. We are consumed by your anger, terrified by your indignation. You have set our iniquities before you, our secret sins in the light of your presence. All our days pass away under wrath. We finish years with a mourn. Our days may come 70 years, 80 years, if our strength endure. Yet the best of them are but trouble and sorrow, for they quickly pass and will fly away. If, if only we knew the power of your anger, your wrath is great as the fear that is due. Teach us to number our days that we might gain the heart of wisdom. Relent, Lord, how long will it be? Have compassion on your serving. Satisfy us in the morning with your unfailing love, that we may sing for joy and be glad all of our days. Make us glad as many days as you have afflicted us, for as many years as we have been and seen trouble. May your deeds be shown to your servant, your splendor to their children. May the favor of the Lord our God rest on us. Establish our work in your hand, yet establish our work. God have a blessing to the reading of his word. Our New Testament text can be found in 1 Corinthians 15, verses 41 through 58. I will be reading from the New International Version. The sun has one kind of splendor, the moon another and the stars another, and the stars differ from the star in splendor. So it will be with the resurrection of the dead the body that is sown imperishable. It will be raised imperishable. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness, raised imperishable, sown in dishonor, raised in glory. It is sown in weakness and raised in power, sown a natural body and it is raised a spiritual body. If there is a natural body, there is also a spiritual body. So it is written, the first man, Adam, became a living being. The last Adam, a life-giving spirit. The spiritual did not come first, but the natural, and after that, the spiritual. The first man was of the dust of the earth, the second man is of heaven. 
As was the earthly man, so are those who are of the earth. And as is the heavenly man, so also are those who are of heaven. And just as we have bore the image of the earthly man, so shall we bear the image of our earthly man. I declare unto you, brothers and sisters, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. Listen, I tell you a mystery. We will not, not all sleep, but we will all be changed. In a flash, in a twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound, the dead will be raised imperishable, and we will be changed. For the perishable must clothe itself with imperishable and the mortal with immortality. When the perishable has been clothed with the imperishable and the mortal with immortality, then the saying that is, is written will come true. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh, death, is your victory? Where, O oh, death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God. He gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, our dear beloved brothers and sisters, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourself fully to the work of the Lord, because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. The word of the Lord for the people of God. Before we call the Reverend George Woodruff, a former pastor of Durham Memorial and the current pastor of the church in Boston, Columbus Avenue, it skipped my head for a moment, the Columbus Avenue Amy Zion Church, the historic Columbus Avenue Amy Zion Church in Boston, Massachusetts. We're going to ask Dazelle, Darcel Blue to come with her solo. Ooh. 
though the storms keep on raging in my life and sometimes it gets hard to tell the night from day still the hope that lies within Excellent is your name in all the earth. Lord, it's that name we call on right now. 
You said in your word that at that name, demons will tremble. So God, we call on that name right now to make the demon of racism tremble. We call on that name right now to make the demon of bigotry tremble. We call on that name right now to make the demon of killing innocent lives to tremble. We call on your name right now. We call on that high and holy name. But then God, we call on that name to comfort this family. They have been and are going through a tragedy. All of the families that were affected by this senseless killing. But God, we call on your name. If ever we needed you, Lord, we need you now. We need right policy, but we need you now. It doesn't matter if you're Republican or Democrat, but we need you now. God, tears are flowing. We need you now. Hearts are hurtful, but we need you now. So we call on your name right now. Bless this family. Bless the Whitfield family. Thank you for the gift of Sister Ruth Whitfield. You just loaned her to us for a little while, but you rightfully reclaim what rightfully belongs to you. And we know that she's in your presence. God, would you wrap your loving arms around this family? And when loneliness attacks, be a buffer to that attack, oh God. Let them know that they've got a friend in Jesus that they can call on that name anytime, anywhere. God, we pray that this will not just be another gathering, that this will not be just another funeral, but God, we pray when we leave this place that we will step into action to make change happen so that all men, all women can live together here on earth. And so, God, we call on your name, and it's in the name of Jesus, the high and holy name of Jesus, the name that is above all names. We call on your name and ask that you not only hear our prayer, but you answer in your own time, in your own way. And in the midst of all that's going on right now, God, We've got enough faith to thank you in advance for what you're going to do. Thank you, God, that we can call on your name. Thank you, God, that we can let the world know whose side we own. And it's in the name of Jesus we ask it. And it's in the name of Jesus we do pray. Amen. And thank God. We thank Reverend Toon and Reverend Coakley, Reverend Woodruff, and we thank Darcel for lifting our spirits even higher. We'll now ask Demata, Demarca, I knew I did it wrong, Demarca Wheeler to come with her selection. Discouraged, oh, why 
the shadows they come and why should my heart feel feel lonely oh and my heavenly home Jesus is my portion, a constant friend is he. Should I feel all discouraged? And why should the shadows they come? Why should my heart feel my heavenly home when Jesus he is my portion a constant friend is he
His eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. We're not eliminating anything. We're just shifting some things around for various reasons. At this moment, I will do my words of comfort. Following that, we'll ask Darcel to come back with her selection. Then following that, the eulogy by the executive director, founder of the National Action Network, the Reverend Al Sharpton. And we will bring back into our service what we have, what we've skipped. We haven't taken anything out. We're just moving things around. Amen. December 13th, 1981. Myself and my young bride and a two-month-old baby arrived at the steps of Durham Memorial Amy Zion Church. On December 14th, I met Ruth. From that moment, we, she became like a big sister for me. She took hold of my wife, and as in the obituary it says, Ruth liked to shop at thrift stores. And before my wife got her job teaching, Ruth would get her practically every day that she was going shopping and drag her and my son to thrift stores. Throughout my ministry, as when we were married, that's when she would shop at thrift stores and come up with some of the best, best things. I can say that I empathize with this family and all who experienced two weeks ago the shooting. I empathize because almost 10 years ago this week, a young boy around the age of 18 took a gun from his father in Knoxville, Tennessee, and decided he was going to come into the neighborhood and shoot up the neighborhood. He confronted my nephew, who was 18. And when my nephew said to him, you're not going to shoot anyone, the young boy turned around and shot and killed him. So I could empathize, because I know the pain. I know the suffering. And as I had to eulogize my nephew, one of the things that kept standing out back then was a song that Robin would sing at Durham almost every other week. At least it seemed like that. It became for me her theme song and it resonated with me. And even as I was doing the eulogy, it resonated with me. And I thought about that when I thought about this family and what to say to comfort. Where do I go to Where, when there's nobody else to turn to? Who do I talk to when nobody wants to listen? Who do I lean on when there's no foundation stable? I go to the rock. I know he's able. I go to the rock. The Lord is the rock I go to for my salvation. I go to the stone that the builders rejected. I run to the mountain, and the mountain stands by me. When the earth all around me is sinking sand, on Christ the solid rock I stand. When I need a shelter, when I need a friend, I go to the rock. Where do I go? Where do I go when the storms of life are threatening? Who do I turn to when those winds of sorrows blow? And there is a refuge in time of tribulation. I go to the rock. I know he's able. I go to the rock. The rock is for my salvation. The Lord is the stone the builders rejected. I run to the mountain, and the mountain stands by me. When the earth all around me is sinking sand, on Christ the solid rock I stand. When I need a shelter, when I need a friend, I go to the rock. The Lord is the rock of my salvation. On Christ the solid rock I stand. When I need a shelter, when I need a friend, I go to the rock. The Lord is the stone that the builders rejected. I run to the mountain and the mountain stands by me. When the earth all around me is sinking sand, on Christ the solid rock I stand. When I need a shelter, when I need a friend, I go to the rock. I say to this family, don't forget the rock. 
even though two weeks ago was, was tragic, the rock never left. Even though hearts are broken or torn apart, the rock never left. Even though the world seemed to be turning upside down and people coming at you from all directions, the rock has never left. And I say, when we leave this place, family, go to the rock. And I said to my family then, as I, I said, I like the 90th Psalm because the Psalm says, Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations. When it talks about a dwelling place, it's not talking about a building. But it's talking about a relationship. A relationship with God who is that rock. So I say to the family, hold on to the rock. As I've dealt with death over the years of my pastoring, and death comes, when it comes, it, it separates us. It separates us from loved ones. It separates us from this realm. But I've come to understand that there are three things, and I'm finished, that death cannot do to you. The first thing is that death cannot take away your memories. The memories you have of Ruth are your memories. As a mother, as a grandmother, as a sister, as a friend, as a church member. And I don't believe there's nothing anyone can say that can change your memories. Her death did not take away her, your memories of her. The second thing I've learned is that death cannot take away your deeds. Whatever you have done, whatever Ruth did to you, for you, or with you, her death cannot take those away. Hold on to those deeds. Remember them. Give thanks to God. But the third thing I've learned about death, and I... I'm persuaded like the Apostle Paul was when he wrote to the church in Rome that I am persuaded that neither life nor death shall be able to separate me from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus. I believe, I'm convinced, I'm assured that Ruth knew who God was. I believe, I'm assured that Ruth understood what the love of God was all about. And even as she went through the issues in the South as she was coming up and then moving up to Buffalo and then raising her family, Ruth had an understanding that the Lord never left her. The love of God was always there. It's that love of God that still is with you. The love of God is still, he's not going to leave you. Her death, the love of God did not leave her then. And it will not leave you now. Hold on to that rock, the rock of your salvation. When all of this is over, when people have gone away and the phone stops ringing, God is still there. And all you've got to do is just call on that rock. Amen. Master. 